Okay, so I went to uh, Treehouse the other day and I picked up this guy that I've never tried before. It's called Green. Let's, uh, let's do a little first impressions here. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. It's got that full Treehouse flavor. Good. <laughs> 7.5. Might get a little tipsy by the end of all this. <laughs> hey friends, it's Kasha. So, here we are. Happy January, everybody. It's, uh, this is my introduction to my no-buy year. Yeah, I'm gonna do a new no-buy year. I don't even know how to begin talking about this. What is a no-buy year, you might be asking? Well, it's a year where you don't buy anything. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, there's going to be more rules and regulations and structure as is necessary to make sure that I don't fail at this great undertaking that is not, not buying anything new for a year. And the rules are going to be setting me up to not fail. You know, I'm trying to I have a bunch of goals I, I have in mind for this project and I hope to achieve them. I hope to stay on track all year long, hopefully save some money, but let's go ahead and talk about why I'm doing this in the first place. Let's go ahead and get into that. So about half a year ago, I found uh, Haley Evans' channel on YouTube and it came to me uh, at a pretty good time. She has, she has a series about having a makeup addiction and it came to me during a time in my life where I was really kind of thinking about quitting makeup basically I had spent so much money basically I started spending like all this crazy amount of money because I needed to buy all this makeup that was on sale during the holidays and then Immediately after that, I did a bunch of traveling early in 2018, and right immediately after that, I um, moved to a new apartment. So by the time it was time for me to move to my new apartment, I had to take a ca out a cash advance on my credit card in order to pay for slash and security, and I had blown all my savings. And you know that's a sh that's a shitty feeling to have to not have any savings to be. Um, in credit card debt, so I ended up spending the next couple of months, all of uh, the rest of April into May and June and July, just taking on as much work as possible. I was filling up my schedule super full, as full as I could for the money, because I needed to replenish my savings, I needed to not be broke, I needed to have money again. And the whole reason I got so bad is because before I didn't really have enough savings to do that, all that shopping and and that move and I had depleted my savings and I just uh, and I couldn't stop shopping I kept shopping anyway you know I realized that my savings were all gone but I went to IMADS anyway and I bought all this crazy stuff and when I took on all that work I had burnt myself out so badly like it Anytime I had a job doing makeup, I didn't feel excited to do it. I felt like it's something I have to do for the money. I have to make sure I make it to this gig. I have to make sure I packed everything. And then I have to make sure I have enough time to pack up and drive to the next gig and do the next gig. And then hopefully I have an another gig after that. And I was just filling up my schedule and I was bringing back all the money, and I'm happy to say that I do have some savings now going into the new year, but that it was an unhealthy work schedule. And because I was working so much doing makeup, I never wanted to do makeup on myself. I wasn't inspired. I was feeling like it sucked. I wanted to give up. I wanted to not do makeup anymore. And I realized that that was a huge problem because makeup is my career. And I realized I didn't have to feel that way, you know? I just needed to take a little time off and come back refreshed and realize that I need to rethink how I spent. 
So, <laughs> I tried to do a bunch of no-buys throughout the year. I tried to do like a two-month no-buy or a three-month no-buy or only buying this or only like one eyeshadow palette this time. None of it works. So, I think we have to do something a little bit more structured, more disciplined, hopefully more effective. I did a lot of notes, lots of writing, several several pages, plans, on, and just free writing about what it is I'm doing here and why I'm here and why I'm doing this and what my goals are. And I don't know if this is going to be very organized, I'll tr try my absolute best, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about why I'm doing this. I have about 11 reasons here as to why I'm doing it. Um, if you're interested to hear the rules and uh, the exceptions and anything else, there'll be timestamps down below for everything. Anyway, this is this whole project is very much inspired by, of course, Hannah Lu Louise Poston, but I actually found a Haley Evans' channel first. Uh, when I found I found Haley Evans' channel right in the midst of that kind of breakdown, basically a breakdown I was having, uh, like not wanting to pursue makeup any further, like um, finding no joy in makeup anymore because I was, um, I put myself in this financial situation that was just no fun. And all of my methods of getting out of that fi detrimental financial situation was, felt like work to me. I found Haley's makeup addiction series and a lot of the things that she was saying really kind of spoke to me about how she was. she's also someone that has an addictive personality. She's also somebody that enjoys traveling. She's also somebody that had took on a bit of a, or a completionist mindset when she decided to become a makeup artist. I'm also a makeup artist. That's my reason number two here. I have to break my completionist mindset. When one chooses to become a makeup artist. Now, for me, it was just another art form that I wanted to, to pursue, you know? It, it's more than just another art form. It's an art form, it's, a, it's creativity, it's creating something, it's making beautiful things. It's just, it's something that I love to do. And I, I wanted to do, have every avenue to do it in. If you de develop a love for makeup, you might want to start collecting it. Uh, Kaylee talked about in one of her videos that she, because she wanted to collect more makeup, she became a makeup artist. I think I, can, I kind of pursued that a little bit too. I, I experimented with being a makeup artist very early on in my life. I was 18 when I got my first like special effects makeup job. Um, but that's, that's besides the point. But when you start shopping for this kit, you you want to have a complete kit, right? So every time you go shopping, and at first it makes sense to go shopping and you're just like, I'm going to need a, a range of concealers, a range of foundations, a range of eyeshadows, a range of brow products. You want to be able to do a good job and you want to be able to have, well, certainly I do, I want to be able to have boundless creativity. So to make sure I will always have everything I would ever need to do the thing that I want on somebody's face, to make that piece of artwork that I want. And, you know, this isn't something that I recently kind of took on. I realized when I was doing my little free write that I've kind of always had this mindset, this completionist mindset, ever since I was a little kid. I, uh, it started when I was about six or seven years old. I started collecting, this is a little aspie, this is a little, <laughs> this is a little weird, if you will, but I had a, as a little kid, a stuffed animal cat collection. <laughs> it grew to excess, like, basically right away. You know, I needed to, every time I saw a stuffed animal cat anywhere, at the grocery store, at the mall, at, the ta at a tag sale, anywhere, especially at tag sales, I had to buy it. And it didn't even matter if I liked it. I needed to have it because it was a cat. It was a stuffed animal cat and I needed it for my cat collection because I needed to have a big cat collection. <laughs> this, is, uh, this sounds crazy, but this is where it all started, you guys. This is how it began. And it didn't end there. A couple of years later, as a young teenager, I started to really have my creative juices start to flow. I took up crafting and 
as a crafter, I needed to have like every color ribbon, every color gimp, a, a wide array of scrapbooking papers, a wide array of yarn, needed to have all the supplies. I had to have a full range of supplies so I could have boundless creativity. So anytime I came up with an idea, I could make it, I could do it. And that carried over even into uh, when I was an older teenager in high school, I, I took up costume making. So I needed to have a wide array of sewing equipment. I needed to have every color satin. I needed to have every color tool, every color, every pattern that I, that appealed to me of fabrics so I could, because I really was into kind of making like punk rock clothes, so I needed that skull, anything that was vaguely gothy. There was like, I had a, a pattern of cloth that was like bats. <laughs> I had another one that was skulls, another one that I had of several different colors of plaid. I just, I got really into, crazy into costume making. And I was busier shopping than I was making those costumes. And then when I went to college, I studied art. And you know how the, you've, you're probably seeing a pattern at this point. I, I became an art student. I actually was doing art in, in high school still, alongside costume making. But um, guess, guess what kind of mediums I was into? I was into mixed mediums. I wanted to have boundless creativity. <laughs> I um, needed all the printmaking supplies, all the painting supplies, all the photography supplies. I needed um, a, a wide variety of films for my film camera, different ISOs. I needed a, ver a variety of different cameras, a variety of different lenses. I needed um, every color of paint. I needed every type of mixing medium. I needed to <laughs> have any kind of tool I could ever imagine to create any kind of painting at any moment because I needed to have that boundless creativity. I started to take on this completionist attitude is because I didn't ever want to, to feel the feeling of not having something to do the look that I want. And that's kind of a toxic thought, right? As I'm telling you these stories, you're probably thinking like, this is the kind of person that needs to not be introduced to the world of makeup. Because you know, costume making, art, crafting, collecting cats, these are not as expensive <laughs> as makeup, especially in 2018. Like the makeup world of 2018 was really aggressive in their marketing. I'm seeing lots and lots of no buy year introductions on YouTube. Power to you girls and boys and, and anybody in between. <laughs> I think a lot of people fell into the trap of these aggressive marketing terms. Like, I think these marketing companies, they figured out that like, you gotta create that sense of urgency. Just like, this sale's only gonna happen this one time, so you better hop on it. Or this sale's almost over, you better do it now. Oh, you've got stuff in your cart. Ever get an email from Sephora being like, hey, you left some stuff in your cart. Did you wanna buy it before it's gone? Yeah, I fell for all that shit. And yeah, I am someone that never buys anything if it's not on sale. So at least I saved money in that way. But are you really saving money if you're never, if you're buying so much stuff that you don't even have time to use it all? That kind of dialogue is kind of designed to make us addicted to shopping. And for me, it worked, it got me addicted. Not only that, but <laughs> I was bound to always get addicted anyway, just based on my history my completionist mindset. Pursuing this no by year, another reason is, it's my reason number one, it's something that was, has been very hard for me to, to come to terms with, but that now that I've come to terms with it, is actually really exciting. I have a be beautiful, huge makeup collection, and I can say, and these are hard words to utter for me, but I can say them now. And it's true, and I'm being honest, my collection is complete. It's complete. I'm an artist, you know? Maybe I don't have like a red blush, or I don't have that perfect 
mauve blush, but I have I have a red blush and I have a light mauve blush, and I can mix them together because that's what artists do. They mix. So I, I've talked a lot about having boundless creativity. I don't have to be bounded. I can just mix. I can, I've got so many colors. I have every color of the rainbow. I have a variety of finishes, a variety of textures, and I need to just kind of dive in and learn to love what I have. Really kind of just experiment with the limits of my collection. I really wanted to make the most of it and learn to love it and hopefully become somebody that creates all the time and I think constantly wanting new things was distracting me from creating. So the goal here is to cre create more, shop less, have more time for creating and stop wanting things all the time, you know. I believe I, I only talked about Haley, but I forgot to mention, obviously, Hannah. Hannah's a really important inspiration here. Um, she talks a lot about the desire to just want something, whether or not you know what you want. Wanting for the sake of wanting something. I don't want to want anything else anymore. I have enough things to, that I can make do. I have enough things that I don't, this isn't even gonna be deprivation for me. And I, you know, I just want to stop wanting things. You know, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you may have saw this coming. One of my reasons that I have written here is I have a really unhealthy relationship with makeup, uh, makeup addiction. And we've touched on this already, but I want to stop being addicted. Um, and this kind of goes into one of the other reasons is number seven is I don't want to be an unwise consumer anymore. I've noticed that because I have so many items in my collection, uh, many of these items only get used a few times when they're new and then they get forgotten about or only brought out once in a while just for the sake of using that thing that you never use. That's terrible. That is awful. I don't ever want to experience that as a consumer ever again. That's not being a a smart consumer. That's being an impulsive consumer that just wants to buy the hot new thing and that needs to have that hot new thing. And you know when I started this makeup collection it was never about having that hot new palette. It was about having that finish or that color or being able to have boundless creativity. As I became somebody that follows sales and I got sucked in to that hot new item world, that gimmicky world. And I don't I don't want to be part of that anymore. I only want to pursue things uh, that are truly gonna add value to my collection. Like, you know, there's no point in having 10 nude palettes. And I'm hoping that by taking on this no buy year, it will give me that kind of breather, that chance to step back from this really aggressive marketing world that makes you buy, buy, buy <laughs> and makes you want to want things all the time that I'll hopefully gain a little clarity and start seeing the these new really, newly released products as products of true value rather than just kind of like your fave, your favorite person is like releasing a palette, they've got new lipsticks but if you don't need a blue lipstick, why are you buying it? Just to support your fave? Is that practical? Is that wise? For some people, it might be. For me, with the makeup collection that I have, it's not. And I also find that when I, not only losing money by being part of this shopping world, I'm also losing a lot of time. Time is indispensable. You can't, you can't earn more time. You can't. And I'm wasting time by constantly following sales and following new releases and following newsletters of different makeup brands and Ulta and Sephora. Because I'm spending so much time doing those things, I don't have time to actually use the beautiful makeup I have. Or I don't have time to pursue other fun things I enjoy doing. I love hiking. I love kayaking. I love... I want this year to actually start a beer blog. <laughs> Not on this channel, it's gonna be on a different channel, but that's one of the things I'd like to do. And if I'm spending an hour every day checking emails, checking 
uh, the weekly WoW at Sephora and I have less time to create. So I'd like to spend less time shopping and more time creating. And by learning to love the things that I have and, and learning to manipulate them to do the things that I want to do, hopefully that, help that even makes me into a better artist. I'd like to be the kind of artist that is that has the adaptability to make things happen in a pinch, you know. Perhaps you only have this and this product, but I hope to become the kind of artist that can manipulate those products in such a way to make the thing that I want happen, happen. Lip gloss to make those eyelids shiny. Use a glittery, you know, mix my glittery eyeshadow into my lipstick to make it a glittery lipstick. Mix a little foundation into my contour to make it even darker for that particular client or even lighter for that particular client. I want to be a better artist. I want to create more. I want to make more artwork and I want to make better artwork. And and I want to be like a MacGyver, you know? I want to be able to know what to do in a pinch. So the next reason is I wrote down here, I've let my spending habits be become self-indulgent and instead I'd like to retain more discipline. Hannah Louise Poston talked, talks in depth about so does uh, Haley. They both kind of talk in depth about the dopamine fit rush that you get anytime you place that order for that beautiful thing that you want. And when it starts tracking and that package arrives, it's like getting a present. You get another little burst of dopamine. And, and you look at it and you, you, you see this new eyeshadow palette and you see how beautiful it is. And you see how you've just acquired it. What a reward that is. The, these are all kind of things that will make you form an addiction, right? These are all little series of little dopamine hits that you get in your head. And the more that you're embedded into the beauty community, you, the more you learn to be accustomed to those dopamine hits and you, you begin to crave them a little bit more too. You know, anytime you're feeling a little bit down and you're feeling a little bored, you might go to ColourPop because they're having a sale and you only need to buy two eyeshadow palettes to get that free shipping and um, and now you've got something on the way, something really pretty that you've picked out, that you get to have and then it comes in the mail, it's like, a, it's like Christmas. Hopefully you're excited to use it right away, hopefully you just can't wait to play with it and you, um, but sometimes, <laughs> especially around Christmas time, you're just like, oh this this website has a sale, and this website has a sale, and this website has a sale, and oh, I better not miss it. Best sales of the year, it's Christmas time. You just stack these orders on top of each other, and you never end up getting a chance to use what you just got. It takes you forever to get around to using them. I actually am experiencing this problem right now, too. Not only have I been accustomed to crave that kind of dopamine hit, I've been letting myself have it, too. You know, I use the excuse, like, I need it for my kit. I need it for my makeup kit. Re too liberally. The truth is that I don't need most of the stuff for my kit. I just want it. I just want to have it. As a result, because I let myself have too many makeup items, I can't have other things. I can't have more travel. Something that's really upsetting is that I can't move to Los Angeles. A big goal I had for 2019 is to, to move to Los Angeles this year and I just haven't saved enough money and I can't do it. And that is heartbreaking. But that's why I'm taking on this no buy year to teach myself some better, more disciplined spending habits. So I don't let my spending habits control what I want anymore. Like, I don't want my spending habits to keep me from having what I want, including something as, as important as finally launching my career in the way that I want by pursuing work in the film and TV industry in Los Angeles. So hopefully uh, this no buy year will help me save some money and uh, be better at this shit. <laughs> Reason number 10, I don't know, I don't know if I've listed off all my reasons in a very kind of bullet pointy kind of way, but reason number 10 I have written here is I want to make more creative and investigative YouTube videos. You know, I'm looking, as I've looked back on my videos from 2017 and how I haven't really had a ton of growth 
It's a very simple reason why. All my videos are just unboxings and hauls. That's all they are. Obviously, some of my best videos that I put out, uh, the video that I've had on my channel that has the most hits are like my kit videos. So the videos showing my makeup kit and talking about how I became a makeup artist or a special effects makeup artist or a face painter. Uh, those videos have more hits. And, you know, it's easy to see why, I think. And I need to learn to do other things. And I'm excited to do other things. I'm, I'm excited to do some videos about how this no by year is gonna is transforming me how i'm coping with it if it's hard if it's not that hard i'm really excited to do more investigative creative content for this youtube channel and the last goal that i have and the last reason that i have to be doing this no buy is i want to save ten thousand dollars in 2019. That is a large number and it's a challenging number, but if I'm effectively working against my shopping addiction, I think it's a doable number, you know? In my busier months for when I work, I'm just going to save a little bit more. January and February and March are slower months, so I'm going to save, I'll try to put aside $500 a month. I'm going to up it to $800 for April. For my busiest months of the year, which are May, June, July, September, and October, I'm gonna try to put aside at least 800, if not $1,000 each month. June and October are my two busiest months. So I'm gonna put at least $1,000 aside on those two months. And the rest of the months of the year, I'm gonna try to put aside 800. So that should even itself out to equal $10,000 throughout the year of 2019. So um, at the end of the year check-in, I'm gonna let you know how close I came to that goal. I think having this tangible monetary goal is gonna help keep me going. You know, it's gonna help me, uh, watching the savings numbers grow is gonna help me be, not want to pull money out of those savings, you know. Uh, yeah, maybe I really want that Gemini palette from Melt Cosmetics, but do I really want to pull from my savings to get it? My savings is getting really high. It's getting up there. It's and in the past, this has been really effective for me too. Like I, in the past, seeing the higher my savings number was, the less I wanted to pull from it. Like. <laughs> Which is ironic, because it's just like, oh, I've, I have a lot of money saved. I, I can spare a couple bucks. It's the opposite for me. It's like, the higher that number gets, the, the, mo the more I'm just like, nope, gotta, gotta keep it there. It's the interest is like higher when the number is higher, you know? Motivator, motivator for me. And if by 2019 I have that money in my savings account, I'll be able to move. I'll be able to go to Los Angeles and that would be really exciting too. But you know, one thing at a time. So now that we've talked at length as to how I got inspired to come to this conclusion about the no buy year and why I'm doing it in the first place and how we got here, let's talk about the rules. <laughs> let's talk about the what and the how of the no buy year. This no buy year is actually going to be pretty simple for me, you know. Um, a lot of people, when they talk about their no buy year, they have many areas of spending that they really want to address. For me, it's mostly just makeup. I guess on the side, I spend a lot at restaurants and I also spend a lot at on beer. <laughs> um, but I'd like to start a beer blog this year, so um, I'm giving myself a budget for those areas, but I'm not gonna, they're not part of the no, no buy. For the no buy year, things I absolutely cannot buy. Number one, eyeshadow palettes. No eyeshadow palettes at all. I haven't actually ever hit pan on a single eyeshadow in my collection. I've never hit pan on, eye, on an eyeshadow. So my goal this year is to maybe hit some pan on some eyeshadows. No new bronzers, no blushes, no highlighters, no lipsticks, no eyeliner, no mascara, no foundation, no concealer, no shampoo and conditioner, no hair products, no new skincare, no new moisturizers, no new oils, no new toner, well maybe some toner if I run out. 
Uh, probably have enough serums. No new body care, except for things I run out of. The rule is that this is much like Hannah's no buy in the sense that I can't buy any of these things. No new health and beauty products of any kind until I've used up every thing in that category in my collection. So if I've used up every single mascara in my collection, I'll give myself permission to buy a new mascara. If I've used up all my bronzers, which will never happen, by the way, I will get a new bronzer. If I've used up all my foundations, I'll get a new foundation. And let's not forget, I am a makeup artist and a hairstylist, so I will need to replenish things for my kit occasionally. Because I'm a makeup artist, and forever foresee that I, if I have a large event coming up, like an event where I have to do a bridal party of seven, which is like the largest one I've ever had, but if I see that I have an event like that coming up and I'm running dangerously low uh, on that essential product, I'm allowed to replenish that product in lieu in preparation for that large event. But no, none of this backups just in case, you know, only in the event of getting prepared for a large event. Not, oh, I. what if I have a pale girl one day that needs an extra light bronzer? Like, none of that. Some other exceptions to this. I'm actually a pretty thrifty person in most areas of my life, which is especially embarrassing to me that I've let my habit for buying makeup and skincare and hair care gets so out of control. Especially because I don't even do anything to my hair. I buy things for my hair kit. Um, I actually don't buy that much stuff for my hair. Only like masks and treatments and stuff like that. Only health and beauty is the place, or the only places in my life where my spending's kind of out of control, you know? I'm pretty good at spending on housewares, you know? All, I'm looking around at my apartment and all my house plants and all my furniture, they were, they were all either bought secondhand or acquired secondhand, or, you know, the only thing that I have in this apartment that was like new was my mattress and my bookshelf that's over there. Everything else was just kind of like found on the side of the road, found at a like <laughs> facility for needy people, or found at the Goodwill, or given to me by a family member, like, I actually should spend more money on housewares. I actually should spend some money on clothes. I actually have not spent very much money on clothes all of 2018. Um, there was one shopping spree I went on back in, like, April where I bought a bunch of workout clothes because I intended to get it into working out, which I did. So those went into good use, and I actually lacked those clothes. Like, I had I had one pair of trail runners that was kind of wearing away. I could use a second pair, so I got a pair of trail runners. And I feel like my relationship with clothes is pretty, pretty realistic, you know? I buy a, a dress specifically for a wedding. I buy um, a new pair of black jeans because my old black pair of jeans ripped at the crotch. Gotta get a new one. I buy a new pantyhose because my old pantyhose ripped. So, you know, I'm not I'm not very indulgent and frivolous in my clothing choices, and that's why I probably have been wearing the same clothes since college. I should actually buy some new clothes. And I'm actually a pretty thrifty traveler too, you know? I don't travel in moments where I feel like I'm gonna have to pull from my savings in order to afford travel. I usually use, like, uh, miles points on my credit card to uh, to fly somewhere. I'll make sure to plan my travel during the off season so I can save some money at the hotels. Um, I'm a pretty thrifty tra traveler. I actually have a whole video on how I travel for super cheap and save a bunch of money down, and I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. January is a good time to go travel because it's the off season. A lot of places you'll save a lot of money. Anyway, but the one thing besides health and beauty that I think I'd like to put experiment with putting on my no buy. I don't know how effective this is going to be. And this isn't even something that's making me waste money, but it's something that I'd like to do for health reasons. Um, my biggest advice at the grocery store is potato chips. Like, I am very self-indulgent when it comes to potato chips. If they're around, I'm going to eat them. And I'd like to maybe not have them around. I'm going to put them on the no buy. 
And I'll allow myself to have chips at like a party or if somebody gives them to me. Like sometimes my boyfriend will get, buy me a little bag of chips because he knows I love them. <laughs> um, just to be sweet. And that's very sweet of him. But uh, no buying chips with my own money because I'm craving them right now. Like my face looks a little swollen and I feel like it's it's because it is fat because of all the chips I eat. That is the rules of the no buy. Now, some exceptions. We already talked a little bit about me needing to replenish my kit in, in preparation for a large event. I'm also planning to go to IMATS this year and IMATS always has amazing sales. So uh, IMATS is gonna be in April this year so that means that's gonna be a full three months of uh, but the no buy year and hopefully I finish off a lot of products that I can replenish at IMATS. I wanna let myself go nuts but I'd like to maybe treat myself to something. So I'm giving myself a little $500 allowance and that seems like a lot but I'm also, let's not forget, I'm a makeup artist. I'm, while I'm there, I'm gonna stock up on disposables, I'm gonna stock up on lashes, I'm gonna stock up on anything I'm kind of running low on, like brow products is something I run out of quickly, mascaras, uh, eyelash glue I run out of quickly, the things that I run out of quickly. Oh, Fix Plus, I'm sure I'm gonna run out of Fix Plus by then, and I'm really low on brush cleaner. Um, brush cleaner is a part of this too, like anything kind of like health and beauty, related. Even brush cleaner counts as like a cosmetic product. So I hope to replenish while I'm at IMATS. And if I have anything left over in my budget of my little $500 budget for IMATS, I might allow myself a pretty little eyeshadow palette. Well, I am going to hold on to my Ipsy and my BoxyCharm sub subscriptions because I genuinely love them. I love Ipsy and I love um, BoxyCharm especially. Ipsy, I think my year with Ipsy is going to expire on in June, so I think I might actually consider not renewing. I'm probably not going to renew because um, it was a lot of, I love Ipsy and I love BoxyCharm because it's, I love to sample new things. It's, it's, it's exciting to have new things. This is why we're here in the first place. It's really exciting to have new things to try. Um, and it's, uh, you know, Ipsy doesn't break the bank. However, I feel like I've had quite enough samples at this point, but I'm keeping it around for the rest of the, the year that I have going of Ipsy, just cause they make for a lot of great gifts. So I'd like to keep it around for, for me to play around with and experiment and then discover new products and also to, to acquire a stash of giftable things uh, that I get from Ipsy and BoxyCharm. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping BoxyCharm for the entirety of the year because I just genuinely love it. I It will help feed my fix for a new and exciting eyeshadow palette that I need once in a while. Um, and it doesn't break the bank, you know. It's already paid for, actually. It's already, my, the whole year's already paid for, so I might as well see it through. And I hopefully I will gift a lot of things throughout the year too. I'm, I'm considering doing a series of like unboxing videos of my BoxyCharm. And because those don't actually get a lot of views, I'm considering doing a giveaway of something out of each BoxyCharm for my viewers. So hopefully, hopefully that's fun for you guys. I'll be allowed to buy gifts and I'll be allowed to accept gifts. So if I score... I actually have, I think I have a $10 Walmart gift card. I might actually use that for like a, a, a drugstore primer or something. Uh, I might find something even better to use it for besides makeup, but um, if I ever get a gift card, I'll be allowed to use it how I please. I'm te I tend to want to use it on my kit anyway, but once in a while, you know, you just... But I hope this is enough in a, of a restriction that throughout the year, I use up a lot of products. I hope that I use up a lot of primers, founda foundations. I don't, I've only used up one foundation in my life and I, I hope, and I, I'm actually running kind of low on some of my foundations. So hopefully I use a couple up this year. Um, hit pan on some bronzers, blushes, eyeshadows. I'm, 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 I don't feel deprived. I feel really excited to use my my things and get to know them and get to love them. You know, really kind of push my 
creative abilities to their limits and push myself to be a more adaptive artist that experiments more and creates new solutions to problems. And so I'm really excited to do all that. So that is it guys. That is uh, the parameters of my no by year. The why, the how, the what, the but. And I actually feel really excited. You know, I'm, right now we're still fresh into this. It's January 7th, so I, I've successfully not bought any new health and beauty products. We'll see how this goes. I'm really excited to check in and uh, learn about my progress and learn to be a more disciplined and more wise shopper, a uh, more conscious consumer. Um, I'm excited to become a better artist. Uh, that's one of my goals. I'm excited to save some more money. I'm excited for this project. I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so I will be checking in really soon with you guys to let you know how it's all coming along. If you have any advice for me, or any channels that are doing this, I'd like to check them out. Um, if you're trying to do something like this, I'd like to check out your uh, no buy videos. I'm out, I also really love watching like empties videos and panning videos. I plan to do a lot of those myself this year. And anything you'd like me to talk about further or any kind of video you'd like me to make, I'd be happy to make that for you. So leave your comments down below, anything that you might wanna add to this conversation. Anything that you think might help me out. I don't follow Reddit, but I heard that there's some great subreddits for this kind of thing. Like the Makeup Rehab subreddit. That could be fun to check out. But yeah, that's it, guys. I'm really excited. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you again in another video soon. Cheers.